Hello, my name is Brian Krakowski, and I'm an associate professor at GIST. A warm welcome to the new master students who just entered GIST. I'm going to tell you a little bit about our lab, the research we do, and introduce you to some of the lab members. The name of the lab is BITS. BITS stands for Bits of Information Transmitted and Stored. The name covers the three things that we study. The fundamentals of information, the transmission of information, and the storage of information. So here are some transmission and storage systems you should already be familiar with. Information transmission systems include wireless transmission systems such as mobile data and Wi-Fi, as well as wired transmission systems like fiber optic and ADSL. On the other hand, information storage systems consist of solid state drives, which include flash memories and magnetic hard disks, as well as distributed storage. Information theory is the application of beautiful mathematics to very practical problems. Our central research problem is how to communicate reliably over unreliable communications channels and to find the fundamental limits of those channels. So in the top half, we have mathematical tools that we use, the Shannon limit, error correcting codes, lattice codes, convex optimization. But we're also interested in the application of those mathematical tools to very practical problems, such as wireless communications, data storage, even multimedia security, and two-dimensional intersymbol interference. I'd like to show you a model of a communication system so you can get an understanding of the type of research problems that we work on. Suppose we have a user that wants to transmit some data to a base station, but it must be transmitted over a noisy channel. If the data estimated by the base station is the same as the data that the user transmitted, we say that we have reliable communications. How do we communicate reliably over an unreliable channel? The user's encoder adds some extra bits called parity to form a code word. This code word is then transmitted over the unreliable channel so that even if a few errors occur in the received sequence, the decoder should be able to recover the original data. Now, I'd like to show you a very clever error correcting code scheme. It can correct one error, and it's relatively easy to understand. I hope you like this. The error correcting code is represented using a red, blue, and green overlapping circles. The four bits of user data are written in the intersections, and the three parity bits are computed by the following rule. The rule is the number of ones inside of each circle must be even. How do we find the parity bit for the red circle? Since there's already two ones inside of the red circle and two is an even number, then the parity bit is a zero. For the blue circle, there's only one one inside of the blue circle, and so the parity bit must be a one so that there are an even number of ones inside of the blue circle. Similarly for the green circle, and that's how a code word is generated at the encoder side. A code word is then transmitted over a noisy channel, but then at the receiver side, we don't know which code word was transmitted, and we don't know where the error occurred. Now I'm going to show you how to do decoding. Can you perform error correction? Either a zero is changed to a one, or a one is changed to a zero. So we have a received sequence, but we don't know where the errors occurred. We write the bits from the received sequence inside of the intersections of the circle. You can see that the red circle has an even number of ones, but the blue and green circle have an odd number of ones. Which bit of the received sequence should we change so that all three circles have an even number of ones. So those were the basics of error correcting codes for reliable communications. Now I want to tell you about the advanced topics, the research that we're doing in our lab to advance information transmission and storage 
for modern communication systems. Before, I showed you a code defined using bits, but we're interested in lattices. Lattices are codes defined over the real numbers. This is particularly important because lattices use the same real algebra as wireless networks. We're designing codes which have a Gaussian input distribution, which is optimal for efficient power transmission. Since error correcting codes are found in most smartphones and most laptop computers, which are battery powered, we're very interested in designing highly efficient decoders in order to reduce their power consumption. Now magnetic hard drives are being replaced by flash memories and SSDs, and so another research trend we're following is the design of error correcting codes for flash memories. The students in the BITS lab are doing cutting edge research on error correcting codes for information transmission and information storage. Now the students are going to introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about their research. Okay. Hello, I'm Eric and I graduate from Information Science at JAIST. Hello, my name is Fan. I'm from China. I got my master's degree from JAIST in March 2017. Hello, my name is Javier. I'm from Mexico and I'm a doctor in Information Science here at JAIST. Hi, my name is Dan. I'm from Thailand. Hi, I'm Hassan from Indonesia. I'm a doctoral student here. I'm, I'm, I'm working on the wireless communication based on lattice codes. And this is very interesting topic for the future network where the high speed communication is required. And if you like to study coding theory and like uh, lattice codes, this is the recommended place for you. I will be here until March 2020 as a doctoral student. My research is designing codes for post 5G wireless communications. Well, an error correcting code is a technique that takes advantage of uh, probability theory to correct errors in a channel, in a noisy channel. So, in that way, we can have standards for wireless communications or wire communications. My work is related to um, LDLC, lattice code. If you want to know more about this code, come and join us. BitLab have a nice environment for study. 2007年の4月にあのマスター1年生になりますえっと、私の研究室来たらあの英語はどんどんうまくなれるよえみんなも仲良いしブライン先生もとても優しいしえ温かい環境であ研究ができますそう so, if you want to know more about this exciting uh, field, please come to BITS Laboratory. Selamat datang di BITS Lab. Just come here and enjoy the uh, international environment. So are you interested to join BITS Lab? If so, you'll need a few basic skills and a little bit of passion. You will need basic mathematical skills of probability theory and linear algebra, and some basic interest in programming. C, C++, and Java are fine. In our lab, we use MATLAB and C. And finally, you need passion to use English as a technical language. That doesn't mean you have to have a high ability, but you have to want to learn to use English. So master students which join our lab in 2017 will be assigned the following project. We're working on applying machine learning techniques to the design of decoders. This is an exciting new application of machine learning to the area of communications. There's a lot of work to be done. So you will study machine learning techniques such as k-means algorithm and classification approaches as well as error correcting decoding algorithms. You will propose new classification approaches for decoders. You can write a paper in English, and if that paper is accepted, then you'll be able to go to an international conference and present it. In fact, it's very common for students in our lab to go to international conferences to present their research. For more information, please go to our website. If you have questions, please feel free to email me. And welcome to BITS Lab. Welcome! Join!